What are your thoughts on the allegations? How serious are they? And then we'll get into Tennessee's response, which is almost as interesting as the breaking news uh, by Pat Forty originally that Tennessee was under another NCAA investigation. Thoughts? Well, first off, you don't ever want the NCAA to come in and investigate your program because sometimes they can conduct an investigation in one direction and they find out something in another. Um, Ask Bruce Pearl about that from when they came in to look at Lane Kiffin back in 2009. So Um, you think, and you mentioned this last night, so you think that being on campus for Lane Kiffin did directly lead to the, the Bruce Pearl issue. I I heard that as chatter, but never really knew if that was true or not. Well, Bruce Pearl told me that, so I'm going to say probably, <laughs> but yeah. that's what he that's what he claimed. So, so the point is, you don't ever want the NCAA on your campus investigating. Now, getting down to the brass tacks of of what I know, what I've seen, what I've read, what I've talked to with sources, it looks like the NCAA. Uh, is come in and try to retroactively enforce rules that were not in place previously. I don't think that's fair. I, I, I agree with Donnie Plowman on that. That is not the way to conduct business. You can't come in and say, okay, here are our rules. And by the way, 10 months ago, you violated our rules. Therefore, we're going to punish you. I think that is absurd. But I, the NCAA in many things, what they do, I think is absurd. So uh, is it a concern for Tennessee? It is a concern. If it's directly related to Nico Iamaleva and his situation with a private plane, he was under, my understanding, contract with Spire Sports. So they're, footed, they're paying for it. It's not the University of Tennessee. Tennessee is not going to fly a guy in on a private plane and pay for it. That, that, I would assure you, did not happen, would not happen. So, but Spire Sports is uh, has got – uh, Emma Levon the contract even going into his junior year, I guess it was. Yes. So, so it, I'm looking at that and thinking, okay, uh, it's an NIL deal. It's allowed in the state of California. I don't see the foul. Now, that's not the only issue though. Spire Sports has 200 athletes under contract in 11 different sports, is my understanding. Are there other situations? Are there other sports that they're looking at that they feel like there were inducements that led to players coming in? Uh, it is unrealistic to think that collectives aren't using NIL deals to help recruit players. Ask Texas A&M about that when they signed the number one class a couple of years ago. So they're absolutely doing it. And for the NCAA to say, no, you can't do that, they got their head in the sand. So, I look, I don't know how serious a lot of this stuff is. I don't know all of the allegations that are out there. But on the surface, from what I know and the people I've talked to, I actually think the NCAA is barking up the wrong tree. All right. So Pat Forty is lighting up our message board. So is the lawsuit that's apparently been fired since we've been on the uh, shot out since we've been on the air uh, about a a lawsuit. So we're aware of that. We're going to get to all that. But uh, one thing at a time with uh, Jimmy Himes. His appearance brought to you today by Don Self of State Farm. Customer service still matters in the greater Chattanooga area. Everybody wants a cheap rate, but what happens when you file that claim? State Farm Don Self and his team take customer service very seriously over 40 years. He is your State Farm agent in the Chattanooga area. All right, Caleb, fire, go. All right, so uh, I just want to get this out there for those who may have not been living, who have been living under a rock, that there was an investigation. It was reportedly Uh, major uh, over NIL. Yeah, for those that have not been living, that that would be a problem for them. But yes, yes go ahead. but 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 to address Jimmy's <laughs> point, we we have to. I, I wanted to make this clear real quick for them with the Nico thing. According to the New York Times, at the heart of the investigation is that Nico Iamaliava was chartered on a private jet to Tennessee by Spire Sports in February of 2022. Now, Jimmy, uh, what I want to point out is okay. So that happened in February of 2022. Nico Iamaliava committed in March of 2022. The Athletic wrote a pretty detailed article at that time that made it an open secret that Nico Iamaliava got, what was it, $8 million to go to Tennessee in that big contract. That's debatable, the amount, but he did get a lot. He got a lot. The NCAA then came out with their new NIL regulations in May of 22, a full two months after Nico committed and a full three months after this quote-unquote private jet charter happened. Now, then they said they will retroactively punish people. They said then that they reserve the right to retroactively punish people for NIL violations. I think they came at Florida State earlier in the year. Mm -hmm. 
It did. Um, it, it is there any way that that holds up in an actual civil court to retroactively punish people for, particularly when they're a nonprofit entity? Yeah, and Jimmy, if I can jump in, you and I talked last night. To me, it's I, I, we're old enough. Caleb's not, but I remember when the speed limit went went from sixty to seventy. When they put it to 70, I don't remember getting any sort of refund on my speeding tickets previously. But that's not how this went. It would be if they moved it from 70 to 60 and then ticketed you from going 70 when the speed limit was 70. Uh, No, that's my point. They shouldn't do things retroactively. That's my point, Jim. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I agree with that. And that's uh, when I mentioned retroactively earlier, that's exactly what I'm talking about. You can't come in later. So to Caleb's point, was that going to stand up in court? I doubt it. Uh, the NCAA, I thought when they hired Charlie Baker that there would be some sensibility to their rulings. Uh, now, I don't know yet, but right now I'm having questions about that. I've heard good things about Baker, but this one doesn't look like it um, uh, holds any water at this point based on what I know. Again, it, are there other allegations outside of Nico Imaleva that they are looking at? Possibly. The number one item is the one with Nico. So that's the one we're hearing about, reading about. But there might be some other things that were occurring that uh, that Spire Sports was not supposed to do. Uh, for example, they were not supposed to be in direct communication with the coaching staff. Uh, did tennis, somebody at Tennessee tell Spire, hey, we're recruiting four quarterbacks, but the number one guy is Nico, so go get an NIL deal with him. That's not permissible. It wasn't then. And if Tennessee did that, they're wrong. I don't know that that happened, though. But to retroactively go back, and, and hit people for rules that were not in place 10 months ago, that's ridiculous. And I do not think it would hold up in court. I, I agree with you, but I want to ask this question. Is there a chance that at any point Nico could be suspended? The opening games, UTC. I still remember back in the day, Jimmy, when you and I worked together, it seemed like Florida would always suspend players for the first two games against basically nobody. Do you think it could even get close to that brought to you by Tennessee Cider Company, the original hard cider of the Smoky Mountains? Use the promo code HAT, that's HAT, to receive some free swag with your cider order available most anywhere in the United States, tncidercompany.com, tncidercompany.com. What are the chances out of 100 that Nico would be sat down for being the focal point of the early reports of this investigation? Well, one quick note, there was one year when Florida had a player that had a two-game suspension, so he was suspended for Eastern Michigan, played against Tennessee, and then suspended the next week. How's that for diverting the rules? Yeah. Uh, is, is there a chance Nico could be suspended on a 1 to, to 100, 1 to 10? What are we doing here? I forgot uh, what you said. Let's go, let's go percentage, <laughs> uh, 0 to 100. I'd go, in my opinion, based on what I know right now, I would say – Five to ten percent. That's about where I am. What about you, Caleb? I think it's more likely now he doesn't get suspended because I think if Tennessee is going to go declare open war on the NCAA to say that they have the strongest case possible, part of having the strongest case is not caving at all on anything on this. So I think if they suspended Nico, even considered it, that would hurt their case in declaring open war on the NCAA, which they have done. So you're at zero percent. I'm at I'm at now negative zero, be below zero percent <laughs> if it's possible. I, I actually think this increased the likelihood that he never gets suspended. Yeah, honestly. Caleb, okay. Caleb now thinks there's going to be a double header against the mocks. So. <laughs> I think I think Hypo will leave Nico. Do you guys? Oh, do you guys remember the um? What was it? The Manziel signing autographs game where he was suspended for a half, and then Kevin Sumlin let him come in in the second half and just throw it all over the field. And I, I think they're going to do that with Nico. I think now Hypo is just going to leave Nico in in the fourth quarter against UT Chattanooga when the game is 57 to nothing and say, hey, throw two more touchdown passes just to stick it to the NCAA. <laughs> well, he might do that anyway. Yeah. Uh, that's, uh, <laughs> that's, that's, that's <laughs> 